Hey guys, welcome to another Fiddleback Friday. This one is for September 27th, 2019. This is a pretty exciting one because we've got a lot of new models coming out of the shop. Uh, a few of them you've seen before. Uh, several of them you have not, unless you follow us pretty closely on social media. We might have given you a little sneak peek along the way. Um, I've actually got a pre-recorded video uh, with Andy himself talking about uh, some of the new models. He doesn't cover all of the models. Uh, just because at that time we, we didn't have them finalized yet. Some were still being profiled. Uh, it was recorded a few weeks ago. Uh, so I will warn you when he's talking about them, uh, they don't all have names when he's talking about them. They do obviously all have names now. Uh, and I'll go over that on my portion of the video when I come back. But we've got 15 Fiddleback Forge knives for you. Uh, as you may have Joey Berry uh, from JB Knifeworks this week as well. Uh, it's pretty awesome. I'm going to show that first after after we go into Andy's video. All of these knives, as, as usual, go live on our website, fiddlebackforge.com, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, of course, which is tonight if you're watching this live uh, or if you're watching it on September 27th. So you'll want to be pretty quick. Some of these models, uh, and I'll talk about that more when we get to individual models, but some may not be made again. Um, there's only a small batch of some, they may not be made again. Uh, the decision hasn't been made yet. Maybe they will, maybe they won't, don't know. Um, at least that's all I know. Maybe Andy's made up his mind a little differently. I'm not sure. So um, just giving you the information that I have. But uh, let's just go ahead and get into it and let Andy give you a little bit of a tour of some of the new models, uh, as well as talking about a couple that you've seen before that are still new as well. Here he is. Yeah. So we're here today to talk about some of the new models that we have coming out. And fortunately, a lot of these don't have a name yet. Even. Uh, but some of the two that we've released already are the, uh, the three that we've released already. One of them is the Snowbill. And that is based on a knife that has been designed for a long time by Bill Snow, who's a, a master knife maker. And uh, he's got this quirky handle design on it. And so I asked him if I could ins let that inspire me and make a knife, and the Snowbill is the first I've come up with. I've got another little model that's the size of the runt, really small thing that's going to be based off of that. Maybe even a bigger chopper. Bill makes a bigger one too. So anyway, those come off of the Snowbill. And then the other new one is the one, is the CR1, which is here. And that is based off of a knife I got from Blade Show by Carl Recksteiner. There's a misconception about this handle. There's been a review of it already. And in the review, because of the shape of the handle, the reviewer was trying to cram three fingers in this front area here to make the knife work for him. Um, the truth is that this hump here is how you index the knife and your third finger should wrap around the hump and it gives an unbelievable amount of control to the knife and it's almost all given with that third finger on that hump. So in front of the hump you have two fingers, one on the hump and one at the back and there's plenty room for your hand in there. I wear a large glove and I can close my hand and there's handle on both sides. That hump is supposed to be an indexing feature and it is, in, it is in the middle of your third finger is the proper way to grip the knife. Now it's about the same situation with the snowbill. It's just that that hump is right where your third finger goes and it, it gives you a level of grip on the handle that's pretty amazing. So I think those uh, are a little different and kind of hard to understand how the handle's supposed to work. So I hope that helps a little bit. Another one of the new ones that I'm coming out with, we don't have a name for this little guy yet, but it's uh, it's runt sized and it's based on the French foot knife. I took the rest of the details of the foot out. I thought that was gaudy, but um, this is my version of the foot knife and it's a cute little knife and it fits your fits your hand really well. It's kind of comfortable. It's, uh, it's gonna be a cute one. I'm excited about that model. Um, of course, we recently released the Warthog I think everybody liked this knife pretty much. This is that new colored layered paper micarta. It's gorgeous. Uh, Warthog is just a hiking buddy size knife. Fits your hand great. Easy to carry. Nice tip on it for you know doing tip work. Um, 
Let's see, next new model. The next new model is what I think is the goofiest of the new models I've done, and it's this one here. And there's things I like about it and things I don't. Uh, I love the way it feels in my hand. I really like this ugly hump on the back. I designed that on there thinking, how do I make a knife around a feature so ugly and still have it turn out pretty? And I think I got there. It's a pretty knife. The thing I really love is the blade shape. The blade, really cool. I think back here, yeah, I'm just gonna redesign and sort of simplify. I am gonna leave the ugly hump on the back though. It's probably just gonna have a different shape past the hump or not have this uh, you know, shark tail shape. Um, but I wanted to do something that was just totally outrageous. And so I wound up with this shark looking knife. And I wanted to make a few. I don't think we're gonna make this as a production knife. I think we've made four or five prototypes and that'll be about all we do. I'm gonna redesign this one and keep everything except this, the trunk end of it here. Uh, but I am excited about it and I've made one for me. And uh, I mean, look how big the handle is. There's so much on either side of your hand, just in a fist grip, it's huge, Use big handle guys. This knife is, I designed it with you in mind. A lot of the new knives have a very open front concept. This one right here, uh, is one I'm very excited about. Uh, of all the new models, I think this one is the most classic bushcrafty fiddleback shaped knife, and it really just sinks into your hand. It's got this gun stock looking back on the on the uh, on the back of the back side of the handle, and I mean this this dip here just locks into your fist. It's and it, again, look how much handle that. That's a lot of handle on a knife. You big-handed guys. This one is with you in mind. I don't have a name for it yet. We got three of them made. When we have 10, we'll release them through Robert and through DLT like we did the last batches. Um, and uh, I'm excited about that one. We got more new knives coming that are in the back that are just starting to get profiled. We got three more runt size knives. We've got a lady finger redesign replacement sort of a knife and two more straight up bush crafting, very simple knives. Uh, I'm excited about it. I'm, we're going to design a lot more coming up. I'm super excited about the new stuff. Alright guys, so there you have Andy talking about a couple of the new models. We're going to go ahead and get into the in hand. Um, first one I'm going to show you uh, is from JB Knife Works this week. This is the uh, High Grind Hiker. If you guys are a fan of stainless steel uh, and outdoor knives, this one is going to be one you need to take a special look at. Um, it is S35VN. Expect to see more of that coming out of Joey. Um, I believe he's making a pretty big switch over there, especially on his kitchen side of things. Um, but this is S35VN. The handle material on this one's actually really interesting. It's uh, it's got it's G10, but it's it's jade. So it's got jade and the white underneath. So you can see the white liner right there, right on top of the the lime liner that gives it the white color, that pearlescent look to it. Um, it's also got uh, little bit of a pearl look so we're calling it pearl jg10 uh, black liners lime pin stripes it's got a three and a half inch blade it's eight and a quarter inches overall uh, the s35 vn like i said is eighth inch it's a skeletonized full tang flat grind uh, just an awesome awesome knife joey just keeps getting better and better it feels really great in the hand really good balance point as you can see um, just an overall fantastic knife um, it's comfortable in all grips. The handle is a really good size. Uh, really has a lot of leftover handle when you're handling it. Really comfortable. Uh, the high grind is going to be uh, really good for a lot of guys. We get a lot of requests for high grinds on the fiddleback side. So I know this one is going to do really well. It's a super killer knife from Joey. Now getting into the fiddlebacks. Uh, so there's going to be 15 of them. The first ones I'm going to talk about are the ones uh, the models that you've seen in the in recent weeks, that's uh, new models. So there's going to be four of those, and then we'll get into the brand new models that you have not seen yet, and uh, we'll go over those in some detail or as much detail as I can without making this video way too long. So here we go, going right into it. Here is the Snow Bill. Uh, you heard Andy talking about that. Design was inspired by Bill Snow uh, from a knife that Andy picked up from him at Blade Show. Um, he was talking about the misconception of that uh, hump right there on the palm swell on the bottom there. Um, you're not trying to fit your fingers in front of it or behind it. 
uh, but your ring finger is actually meant to sit on top of it. So your front two fingers are locked in uh, to that arch and your pinky is locked into the back and your ring finger gives you a ton of control right there on that hump. So that's the design of the Snowbill. It's a super good knife if you like a lot of grip if you're trying to do heavy duty cuts because um, it gives you a lot of control um, and it's just really strong grip knife as well. So let me get to the specs on this one here. Um, so on the handle material is a dyed oak and black liners, orange pinstripes. The blade on this is about three and an eighth. Uh, the overall is about seven inches. It's eighth inch A2 and you can tell it's got a sweet taper tang on it as well. So really killer snow bill if you've been waiting on a really good one of those uh, and a really nice beautiful wood. There it, is. there it is. There it is. You can't ask for more than that. So that is the Snowbill. Uh, another one that you've seen, a couple of them roll through anyway, uh, is the new Warthog. So Andy talked about that a little bit as well. Really designed to be able to do uh, some tip work. I personally like this model a lot. It feels very uh, just comfortable and familiar in hand. So I carry a hiking buddy a lot of times. Uh, I also like the handyman model a good bit. Uh, this seems nice, like a, a nice compromise between those two, so it feels very familiar uh, to your hand right away. It's just super comfortable. Uh, skeletonized full tang on that one. Uh, that burlap right there is really cool. Uh, it's called a brisket rub burlap. So uh, that's Phil's influence there. He's a, he's a barbecue junkie. So the brisket rub burlap, shout out to Phil IP. Black bolsters, black liners. Uh, the blade on it is about three and a quarter inches. Overall, you're looking at about seven and three eighths. So three thirty seconds on that skeletonized full tang, super lightweight in hand, feels great, feels comfortable. Uh, you absolutely can't go wrong with this knife for an everyday carry. Um, I'm probably personally looking to pick one up pretty soon uh, if we can get enough of them coming through. We don't want to deprive you guys of any, so we don't get first dibs on the ones that comes out. Uh, contrary to what you may think, but. Uh, there is the Warthog. So another one that you heard Andy talking about is the CR1. CR stands for Carl Recksteiner. He was the inspiration behind that, as you saw earlier in the video. Andy showed the example of that knife as well. Um, this one, one thing I love about it, I'm actually looking for a skinning knife coming up into hunting season, and I'm actually thinking about using this model. Because um, even when you have a more slippery handle material, uh, like something that finishes out uh, like this does. I believe this is actually paper micarta. I think we've got it listed as bone micarta, uh, bone being the color. I don't think that's right. Um, it may be. I may be wrong, um, but it may be a paper micarta, which is what I think it is. Um, but these tend to finish out a little on the smoother side. Well, the great thing about this design is the way that it locks your pinky in and it locks your front two fingers in. It won't move on you. Uh, so even if it gets wet, even if it's it just your grip is wonderful in this and the control like Andy was talking about with that ring finger uh, really aids in that so I think the blade shape uh, as well um, is going to be great for doing that for skinning purposes uh, for, for breaking down game but I think this is an all-around great outdoors knife and a great EDC as well so quite beautiful nice and shapely um, like I said we've got this list as bone micarta it may actually be paper micarta I'm not sure if I'm mistaken or if it was mistaken when it got to us but um, black liners, blue pin stripes on this. The blade length is about three and three quarters. Overall is right at eight inches. Uh, eighth inch A2 on that one. Skeletonized full tank. Really, really nice balance. Uh, now, if you've been waiting on one of these in a non micarta because you want something in a wood, we also have an absolutely beautiful one. Need to pull the video up real quick. We lost the video feed on that one, but if you give me just a second, I shall find it. This is the joy of doing live streams. So, all right, here we are. So here's the Crimson Maple Burl, absolutely gorgeous. You see the uh, mosaic pin there on the fifth pin. Um, I can't say enough about how gorgeous this knife is. Now, one thing to keep in mind with this one, we've got another one coming up too. Uh, that this is the case for, but when it comes to chatoyants and woods, um, which is basically when you shift it in the light, it actually looks like the material is moving underneath. You can't see it real well in the videos. You can't see it at all in pictures because it's stationary. You can pick up a little bit on the video, but you can't pick up all of it only because we have multiple light sources. So if you get this thing out in the sun and start moving it around, 
It looks like the material shifting a little bit. It's got a little bit of that chatoyance in it. It's just a beautiful color. Um, obviously, it's got uh, black pen, black liners and yellow pinstripes on that. Skeletonized full tang, uh, eighth inch on that as well. Just an absolutely beautiful knife. So if you've been waiting on a CR1 to pick up with uh, with a wood handle, uh, I don't think you're going to get better than this. This thing is gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. And it handles just as well, obviously. You can see the balance point there. Uh, handles as well as all the other CR1s. Super duper grip. Um, just a fantastic knife, in my opinion. Um, just absolutely beautiful. I don't know what else to say about it. It's fantastic. So hopefully... Uh, Maybe you guys won't pick it up and I'll have a shot. <laughs> so we're going to get into uh, one of the brand spanking new models Andy showed you uh, in his portion of the video there. Um, this one was the where he talked about the French lady foot and he took something off of it. Well, we're calling this the geisha. Uh, if you look at that foot shape on there, uh, if you know anything about Japanese history, which you probably don't because I don't know very much. I just remember seeing something about it. Um, but geisha women, uh, one of the things that they thought were very beautiful was very small feet. Uh, so they would jam their feet into these horrible shoes, deforming their feet forever so that their feet would appear to be super duper small. So that shape of that shoe they used to wear looks a lot like uh, the pommel on this knife. Um, so that's where the name geisha came from. I, I know, kind of weird, but... Uh, that's where it came from, but this is a really cool knife. It's, it's very similar to the runt in size, as you heard Andy say. Um, super comfortable in hand. Uh, you see how it kind of locks in there. It, that The back part of that foot gives you, I mean, you can put your finger right behind it, make sure you're not running up on the blade, giving you lots of leverage and lots of strength to it. Um, just a really, really super cool little knife. It'll go great in a pocket sheath as well, as you might imagine. And let me grab the specs for you here. All right, so this is a teal micarta, black liners, lime pin stripes, as you can see. Uh, the blade, short as you can imagine. Uh, it's about two and a quarter inches, and it's only about five inches overall. So this is a small, small knife. So uh, like I said, great, fantastic for pocket carry. You pull this out at work to break down some boxes, and nobody's going to look at you crazy like you pulled out a machete. Uh, so if you work in a very politically correct environment and want to carry a nice fixed blade knife, uh, nobody's going to be afraid of this one. Uh, it's going to be very useful, very functional, um, but not freak anybody out. So that may be exactly what you need in your workplace. Uh, if so, there you go. So 8th inch A2 on that, skeletonized full tang. Um, just a fantastic little knife. I love it. Another new one. Uh, Andy showed you a variant of this one. Just keep in mind, all the ones that Andy showed you, some are the ones you're seeing here, some are not. Uh, some are prototypes that didn't make it out of the shop. Some are ones he kept to te test. So um, keep that in mind as well. Uh, this is the Gunstock Bushcrafter. Now it's got the Gunstock name, as you can tell from the handle shape. It's very reminiscent of a Gunstock on a classic rifle. Um, very comfortable in hand, more than you would actually imagine that it would be. It really locks in. Uh, the way it flares back out right, right at the back of the pommel there really locks it into your hand. Um, that shape on the back as well as the shapes on the front, not only does it lock in when you have it in multiple grips, you always know where everything is. So it indexes really super well. Uh, the blade shape on it is fantastic. Um, so we're really looking for this to be uh, a model that bushcrafters pick up and really like to use and handle. Um, it just feels good no matter how you hold it and you know where it's at. So that's one of the most important things when you're uh, when you're doing some bushcraft skills. So uh, like I said, Gunstock Bushcrafter, specs on it. Uh, it's a chocolate burlap, natural liners, white pinstripes. Uh, the blade is about three and seven eighths inches long. Uh, so it's not quite a four inch blade. Uh, it's eight and five eighths overall. And this one is an uh, eighth inch A2, and it is tapered tang. So it's a slightly tapered tang. It really brings that balance point back in the handle. It's, it's just super well balanced, super good, awesome. So we got another one of those as well. Uh, so if you're not into the chocolate burlap, you may be into this gorgeous beast. Uh, this is one of those that I talked about with the Chatoyants. This thing absolutely changes colors and shades and everything uh, in the light. You can see it a little bit in the video, I think, um, but really it's getting a one direct light above your head or out in the sun. 
it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. So the handle material uh, is a seafoam persimmon. So it's a persimmon wood, black liners, white pinstripes. Uh, it's got a three and seven eighths inch blade on there. So again, like you know, obviously like the other one, it's just like it model wise. Not quite a four inch blade on there for the, for those of you that need it under a four inch blade. There's certain states that don't allow you to carry anything four inches or above. Uh, so this is going to fit in nicely with that. Um, nice roomy handle. Um, I think even smaller hands because of the way this is shaped is going to be good because it, it uh, gives you multiple grip points. Um, but larger hands, as you can tell, I wear the large, extra large glove. Um, I got plenty of room on this knife. Absolutely plenty of room. It locks in really great. So I think even the larger hands will fit well. Uh, so I think it's going to be a really great universal bushcraft style knife for everybody. Uh, this is 8th inch A2 taper tang. With a slight taper, you can see it moves the balance point back to that second set of pins. Um, just makes it real super lightweight and nimble in the hand. Um, I think that's going to be great. I think you guys are going to really, really enjoy that model. Um, we can't wait to hear feedback on it. So another one coming up that's brand new. This is called the CX Tasker. Now it's not a traditional CX um, shape because it doesn't have more of that uh, slanted tip and that kind of thing. But kind of in spirit, um, the way the blade doesn't swoop up very much. You don't have a lot of belly to the blade. Um, that kind of thing. It's very straight. It's almost Puko-ish. Um, and the fact that it doesn't have any kind of finger guard or anything like that. Now looking at it, the way it looks like the handle kind of slides up into the into the blade, you feel like looking at it, I'm going to feel like that's going to, my hand's going to run up on there. Um, it doesn't. It locks in really nicely uh, in a variety of grips. When you're holding it, it, the shape of it tells you exactly where it is all the time. Um, actually, even when you turn it over in reverse grip, uh, that little notch down there at the Ricasso, your finger can actually feel that so you know you're at the end of the handle. Um, and you'll see that here in a moment, I think I did. So this one's Desert Ironwood, of course, which is always a fan favorite because it's gorgeous. If you're a fan of wood-handled knives of any kind, Desert Ironwood is always high on the list. Um, it's definitely high on my list. I really like it. Um, so Desert Ironwood, got natural liners, orange pinstripes. Now the blade length on this is about, about four and three eighths. So it's over a four inch blade. Uh, so it's kind of a long lean kind of feel. A nine and a quarter inches overall. So you got plenty of handle, you got plenty of blade. Um, that CX style blade where it kind of, you know, goes down at the tip there, doesn't sweep up with a lot of belly. Really good for tip style work. Um, you can really just a lot of precision with this knife. It feels good when you got your index finger on the back of the spine there. Um, it really rests in the palm of your hand really, really well. So I think you guys are really going to dig this model as well. Um, very much on, along the task oriented ones that we've done in the past with like the Reaper and the Bushcraft Tasker. It's very much in those spirits um, with a little bit more of a lean spelt handle on it. So that one's Taper Tang, 8th inch A2 as well. And we have another one of these. If wood's not your flavor, if you need a little color in your life, a little bit of love, the next one's going to be for you. Whew. Man, that is sexy. I can't get over it. I'm, the light hits this thing. It just, it just absolutely lights up. It's gorgeous. So we're calling it Ice and Fire Mosaic. It is absolutely as gorgeous in person as you can imagine from this video, which does a little bit of justice, but not all the way. So... Four and three eighths inch blade, like I said, nine and a quarter inches overall. Eighth inch A2. This one's a skeletonized full tang, uh, so it moves the weight a little bit further up on the handle, but not too much. Just about right where those uh, first pins are, a little behind them, uh, as you'll see here in a moment. Um, just like I said about the last one, it's, it, it feels great in the hand, um, probably more so than you would think by looking at it, um, especially in that grip right there. It just it's just comfortable. Uh, it doesn't feel like it has any hot spots whatsoever when you're handling it. Um, obviously, because it's a new model, I haven't had it, you know, out in the woods or anything yet, but uh, it feels like it's going to be a winner, totally, to me. Um, absolutely fantastic knives, and this one's obviously one of the more beautiful ones you're ever going to see, because that handle material is absolutely stunning. So a little bit of a close-up there on the blade, um, so you can get a really good idea of the blade shape, which is awesome. This one great thing about all the newer models, because Andy's been doing this for so long, he's got a really good eye for blade shape uh, and functionality, and, and this one is no different. 
Um, but I think, like he said, I think out of all the new models, my favorite blade shape has to be on this one. So he referred to this as a sharky looking model. Well, we named it the Barracuda. Uh, as you can imagine why by looking at it, it's uh, very long and lean and fish-like with the fishtail handle on the back which when you first look at it, you're like, ah, I, don't, I don't know about that. Soon as you get this thing in your hand, it locks in. So uh, it's not a huge full-size handle. Uh, so if you got big sausage fingers, big mitts, you may not like it, but for normal mortals, putting this in your hand, it feels great. It just really, really locks in. I can't even, I can't even explain to you how well it locks in. So the way it flares up back there on the pommel, uh, right there at the fishtail, it just absolutely, it just absolutely locks in. You do not feel like this knife is going to move on you, no matter how you're holding it, which is amazing. Um, like Andy said, he's you know even he's not sure about the the, the tail design, so it may be a feature uh, that goes away in the future. I don't know. Um, I can tell you, he loves the way the handle feels. He loves the the shape of the blade as well, as do I. Um, it's amazing in person. Uh, it looks great here, but it's amazing in person. Um, so I think that there's going to be some variation of this in the future, uh, but there may only be, you know, half a dozen of these uh, ever made, which is to me unfortunate um, because it feels so awesome in the hand. So this one is oatmeal burlap, uh, oatmeal jute burlap because it has the darker specks in there. Um, regular burlap doesn't have the uh, darker brown jute in there. Uh, let me get to the rest of the specs here. Uh, natural liners, blue pin stripes. So the blade is a little over four inch blade. It's about four and an eighth inch blade, uh, eight and seven eighths inches overall. So you got plenty of handle. You got plenty of blade. Eighth inch A2. Uh, this one is tapered tang. It's just awesome. So I've got another one of those to show you as well. Uh, if the oatmeal jute burlap is not your thing, maybe this one is. So another sexy Barracuda. This one is the crosscut micarta that you've seen us do a lot of lately, which is, we love it. It's amazing. So you're going to see a lot more of it uh, with the burnt orange micarta bolsters. I mean, I don't think there's a better, better com combination of colors uh, that we're doing right now. I mean, this is really, really just a great, fantastic looking knife. Um, so natural liners on that, like I said, um, four and eighth inch blade, as I said before, eight and seven eighths inches, eighth inch A2 on this, taper tang. Uh, you, you're not going to go wrong with these, and you may not see them, see many more of them. So hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully he decides to keep making more. Um, I really dig it. Can't tell you as much how much I dig it. I really like on this one how they did the, uh, the bolster as well. They changed the angle a little bit on it, uh, where it's not as straight and in line with the pins. It's got that little bit of cross to it. I think it's awesome. It sets it off really well. Um, I just can't express to you guys how comfortable this thing is in hand, no matter how you're holding it. The thumb even locks in real nicely at the top. So that's where that shape comes from um, at the top. So it was an experiment in thumb placement when you're reverse gripping like that. Um, absolutely wonderful. Sorry about the lint on the blade. That happens. Uh, sometimes I don't see it until the video is already going. Uh, you know. So that's how that goes. Your thumb locks in nicely and indexes nicely. Really awesome balance. Um, can't go wrong with it. Can't go wrong with it. That's the Barracuda. So another great outdoors knife. However, we're veering off the outdoor path a little bit here coming up. So this one is the Femme Fatale. So the Fiddleback Forge Femme Fatale. Um, it is uh, as deadly of a design as it looks. Um, this is not meant for feather sticking, as you can imagine. Uh, it is uh, meant to do all the things it looks like it's meant to do. So I'll put it that way, and I'll leave it at that. Um, that's the freckled bone linen you've seen out of us before. Um, absolutely gorgeous. It's got black wood bolsters. Uh, so there is more wood detail in person, and black wood, in my experience anyway, um, when it's sheathed a lot in leather, will lighten up on you. You'll see a little bit more of the grain, uh, but it comes out really super dark when you first get it. Uh, the detail is just going to look better and better and better as it ages. So really classic color combo with this. Uh, the natural liners really set it off. Uh, the blade length on this is three and a half inches. So if you're in one of those places where the four inch blade's not going to work, um, there you go. Uh, seven and a half inches overall. The handle is about, a, 
really a three finger design. It's kind of in between a three finger and a four finger. Um, the shape of it really locks it into your fingers. Uh, if you're holding it in more of a in more of a four grip, uh, similar to that, but more more grip more tightly, uh, your pinky slides behind it super conveniently and nicely. Very comfortable. Um, the indexing on that's really great, so you can see the deep index right there on the bottom. Um, so whether your thumbs in it, whether your index fingers in it. Uh, if you're making any kind of forward motion with it at all, stabbing it in, into anything you're working with, um, no, no uh, worry about your hand slipping up on the blade. So absolutely beautiful. Can't say enough about this one either. It's going to be very, very popular. So we've had a lot of people catch little glimpses of this uh, in, in various pictures and photos and uh, videos out there. So we've got a lot of comments about, ooh, ooh what is that? So uh, it's going to be pretty popular. Uh, especially if in your, you're in the urban world where you need something a little uh, utilitarian, but also maybe have to protect yourself a little bit. This is going to be this is going to be a great great one. So this is five thirty seconds A2. So it starts out as really thick stock, but as you can tell, the way it's ground, uh, it's lean and mean as it goes toward the tip. So taper tang on that as well. Um, so you got a lot of shape to that steel, which is awesome. Really sets it off. Really makes it sexy. Now I've got another one of those as well, and this one is pretty cool. So this is that black blue micarta. Uh, yeah, blue black. Sorry, got them reversed. Blue black micarta, uh, black bolsters, black liners on that. Uh, three and a half inch blade, like I said, seven and a half inches overall. This one's eighth inch A2. It's also tapered. Uh, the cool thing about that blue black micarta is when you turn it like that. The blue almost disappears on the back and really pops as you turn it to the side. Uh, so this is a little bit of a, uh, uh, a knife that you're going to be able to appreciate the features very subtly. It's not very loud, uh, very classy, very beautiful. As you can see there, uh, the blade is exactly what you think it is. It's awesome. That swedge on it really just sets it off, makes it super sexy. Um, so this one's a little thinner stock. Uh, then the last one I showed you, so this is the 8th eighth, the eighth inch A2 instead of the 5 seconds. Um, sexy, absolutely sexy knife. So a lot of you guys are going to be loving that. As you can tell, it really locks in in the forward motion, as you can imagine. Super awesome. Now, if you like that, but it's just not quite deadly enough looking for you, which I can understand. You know, you just feel like a 3.5 inch blade isn't going to do it. Well, this one might be more to your liking. So here we have the Fiddleback Forge bread knife. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's not a bread knife. Uh, I guess you could cut bread with it uh, no matter where that bread was. But um, yeah, so this is, we're calling it the needle. So for those of you that are Game of Thrones fans uh, or nerds, as it were, like me, I was a fan. Uh, there's a character on there named Arya, and she carries a very lean, mean, little dagger-type sword uh, that she named Needle. So there goes the name for this as well. Uh, and just like what Arya does with hers, it's kind of what this one's meant for as well. Uh, it's meant to make you a hero. That's what it is. Meant to make you a hero. So Osage on this one. Uh, this is a really nice dark Osage. Uh, and Osage just gets darker as it ages. So this is going to be absolutely amazing a year down the road if somebody uses it and gets their oils in your their oils in the hands in this in this osage it's going to turn darker it's going to be amazing um natural liners blue pin stripes on that now the blade length i'm sure you're wondering that long pointy blade is six and a half inches long uh, this is 11 inches overall so if you were in a place that does not want you to carry long blades this is not for you at all uh, but if you really like a long, lean, sexy, dangerous looking knife, there you go. That's it right there. So 530 seconds A2 on that as well. So it starts out as super thick stock. That way when you carry that, that long line all the way to the tip, all the way down that six and a half inches, uh, you got plenty of, uh, plenty of room there. So we got another one of those as well. So this is going to be the last of the Fiddleback Forge was... Forge knives that we're doing tonight for Fiddleback Friday. Another needle as well. If you want something a little more super sexy, classy kind of look, uh, the Maroon Micarta never disappoints. 
when it comes to that. So natural liners, white pinstripes on this one. Uh, this is 530 seconds A2 as well is where it starts out. Uh, taper tang on that as well. Uh, it just looks deadly. <laughs> it looks it looks deadly. It feels deadly in your hand. It just, uh, Andy wanted something just really aggressive. I can tell you on this one, this one is, I'm not going to say 100% because you never know. Uh, but from what I understand, what Andy has told me uh, in the past about this particular model, he wanted to make this one because it was super fun. It was challenging. Um, so he did. He's probably not going to make more than what he's already made. So we've got two coming up this Friday. I think there's only a couple of few more in existence, um, and they're probably not going to be made again. Uh, they're, they're hard to make. Um, he had a lot of fun designing it, a lot of fun making it. Um, but as you can, as you can imagine, uh, there's, there's a limited functionality, uh, for those. So if that's the functionality you want it to fit, or if you're a collector or just love the design, it's going to be for you. Uh, if you're a hardcore bushcrafter, this is not your knife. This is not your knife. So, uh, that's the needle. It's awesome. It's sexy. It's beautiful. And it's going to be rare. So pick one up if you are a fan and, uh, that's going to be it. So just a reminder, all these knives go up on the website, fiddlebackforge.com, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. They're going to go live. They're going to go quick. Um, we've seen a big influx lately on traffic, uh, and knives going faster on Fiddleback Friday than they have uh, in recent time uh, during the slow season. So we're getting into the busy season. Uh, knives are going quick. Uh, people are getting upset because they're, you know, they post at 9 o'clock. They're gone at 9.01. So, you know, if you show up at 9.05, don't be upset that the one year you want is gone because it probably will be, especially with this batch, especially with being new models. So you've been warned. So see you at 9 o'clock tonight, and I'll also see you next week at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. As you can tell, we are switching over from doing this on Facebook Live, doing it on YouTube Live, but we are still posting it on Facebook at a later time. Uh, and we're also posting on Instagram TV so you can watch it wherever you want to watch it. Uh, and if you're subscribed to the newsletter, uh, you get it in your email newsletter as well uh, before the knives go live at 9 o'clock. So you get a chance to do the preview, know exactly what you're getting based on the photo previews that we put out in the blog, on Blade Forums, uh, and in the newsletter. Uh, on top of that, we do this video so that you know exactly what you're getting. Uh, you know exactly how this is going to look and feel, uh, or at least a better idea of how it's going to be in hand. So that's why we do what we do. So hopefully you guys like it. We'll see you next week. And until then, life's too short to carry an ugly knife. And I want to play you some really cool video from the shop on how these get made. And call it a day.